أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه I greet you all with the greeting of Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May Allah's peace and blessings uh, and mercy be with you all and with us all اللهم آمين So I'm going to start with uh, a quick recitation uh, from the beginning of Surah Al-Isra, Surah number 17, uh, the first few ayat from Surah Al-Isra, insha'Allah, and then uh, I will be sharing with you final remarks on uh, the miraculous journey of Al-Isra, the night journey uh, of Al-Isra and Al-Mi'raj, and lessons we learn, and I hope, insha'Allah, you can share, feel free to share your thoughts and lessons and ideas uh, whether about al Isra or about um, any beneficial thing that can uh, we can benefit from or anybody can benefit from in the previous nation. So, this is going to be a quick recitation from Surah Al Isra, inshallah. <clears throat> سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
أحسنتم أحسنتم لأنفسكم وإن أسأتم فلها فإذا جاء كما دخلوه أول مرة وليتبروا ما علوا تتبيرا عسى ربكم أن يرحمكم وإن عدتم تُمْ عُدْنَا وَجَعَلْنَا جَهَنَّمَ لِلْكَافِرِينَ حَصِيرًا إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ يَهْدِي لِلَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَمُ يهدي للتي هي أقوام ويبشر المؤمنين ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا كبيرا وأن الذين لا يؤمنون بالآخرة أعتدنا لهم عذابا أليما صدق الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله. At this time we really need to connect with this, the book of Allah subhanahu wa taala. We have all the answers right there, all the answers for our questions. It addresses everything. إن هذا القرآن يهدي. Indeed, this Quran, this book, guides to that which is the best. 
ويبشر المؤمنين and it gives glad tidings for the believers الذين يعملون الصالحات those who do the righteous actions أن لهم أجرا كبيرا that for them there will be greater work, bigger work so this is the time we really need to refer to the Quran at all times, not only now so tomorrow is going to be the first day of Sha'ban we are 29 or 30 days from Ramadan it's just around the corner so we will be talking today inshallah about the final remarks on Al-Isra Wal Mi'raj or the miraculous journey of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam night journey to Bayt Al-Maqdis and then Al-Mi'raj to Allah we're going to put everything together and summarize the lessons and also uh, add a few more things we mentioned that Al-Isra is, is um, the journey of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ثبتت بالقرآن is mentioned in the Quran there is actually one surah that is named after Al-Isra which is the surah that we just recited from Al-Mi'raj is mentioned in Surah Al-Najm when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was talking about him كان قاب قوسين أو أدنى فأوحى إلى عبده ما أوحى and it talks about how he got so close to Allah and received the wahi from Allah and Allah showed him from his ayat so both of them are mentioned in the Quran. Isra is mentioned uh, directly and clearly uh, more than anything else. It was with the body of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Asra bi abdihi, the Abd, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi himself, it was not a vision or a dream like some think. Asra bi abdihi, Allah said he took his Abd, his servant into a journey. That means the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. And if it, if it was a night vision, just a dream, it would not, it would have been no question or no wonder from the mushrikun when he told them because we can see everything in our dreams. So he was taken, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was prepared, angels came, washed his heart and in preparation for that brought him a special mount and then he went in al-isra and he saw many things according to the authentic hadith. In one hadith he saw Sayyidina Musa praying in his grave. He, sa he, saw, I, I, uh, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I saw Musa, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, qa'iman, standing, praying in his grave, عند الكثيب الأحمر, at the red dunes where he uh, was buried, uh, Sayyidina Musa Alaihi Wasallam. He also, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, saw many things. He saw a dunya in a form of an old lady. He saw a dajjal. All of these are mentioned in the ahadith. And then he saw the prophets and led them in salah. The significance of that is that we learn that this is the seal of all the prophets and the leader of all the prophets. His mission seals all the missions before him. It's one mission, it's one religion, and this is the final uh, message. He led them in salah, and then he um, uh, was taken by Sayyidina Jibreel to al mala al-A'la, to the skies, the heavens, one heaven after the other, one sky after the other. He met Adam alayhi salam, the father of humanity, and then he met Yahya and Isa, and then he met Yusuf alayhi salam, and then he met Idris, and he met Harun, and then Musa in the sixth sky, Ibrahim in the seventh, and then he got to Sidrat al-Muntaha in the seventh heavens. It begins in the sixth, it ends in the seventh. It's a huge tree, Sidrat al-Muntaha, that it uh, marks um, a difference between two dimensions, everything below and everything above. Everything below is the, this world, or the uh, everything under the sky is Alam al-Ins wal-Jinn, the world of humans and jinn. Angels can come to execute things with the permission of Allah as well. But then the world of skies where angels are, and then beyond the seventh heaven is the Jannah to Allah wa ta'ala, the Jannah is Arsh al-Rahman, is not much knowledge, uh, not really many people can know what's beyond. This is where Jibreel alayhi salam ended the company with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, and then he had to go by himself to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he heard Kalamullah wa ta'ala, he heard him directly, he heard the word the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah talked to him and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed and made sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah gave him the special reward of salah, 50 in the beginning, being reduced all the way to five in terms of action, but they are still 50 in reward to be the mi'raj or the ascension of all believers. If Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given ascension, 
as a, a, a way of honoring him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then every believer is offered ascension several times a day and actually at any time. The minute you get in salah, you are talking to Allah. And the minute you are reading Quran, Allah is talking to you and listening to the word of Allah directly. So every believer can make this ascension with his soul to directly talk to Allah in salah. And alhamdulillah, this is available. Yes, we are tested by having our masjid closed right now, but it is being done for a serious and, and very important cause, uh, which is the priority of safety or um, uh, avoiding mass transmission of that vicious virus. May Allah protect us all. But that doesn't mean you cannot pray. You can actually pray anywhere. You can pray at home. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, masjidan." The entire earth is being made as a masjid for me. Entire earth. And the soil of it is the means of purification for me because if you don't have water, we can make the tayammum or the dry ablution where it substitute the water in case you have to use it. So wherever you go, you can pray. And I always when I mention this hadith, it comes to my mind. Anywhere on earth. And then the discussion amongst the fuqaha, he said, Al Ardu, earth is a place for me to make sujood. What about if I'm on a ship? That's not Ard anymore, that's not uh, land. What about if I'm in a, an aeroplane? Or if somebody goes to, I think one of the companies uh, uh, was trying to. Uh, arrange for some tours to the outer space. What if we go there? Can we pray? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Ardu, the earth is a masjid for me. But again, the uh, scholar said, if you are on, on top of water, you are still, the water is an earth, it's touching the earth somehow. And then if you are on the air, air is still uh, on the uh, earth, not outside of earth. Even outside of earth, yes, he mentioned earth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but is it really meant? or the purpose is worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the purpose is worshiping Allah, whatever you happen to be, you can be there. Point is, you are giving the chance to connect with Allah. We are not like some other faith where you have to pray only in the place of prayer, or only in the sacred place. Yes, the masjid is the most sacred place for us, but however we can, we can pray anywhere. Pray at home. That's what we read in the Quran, make your homes a qibla, a place of direction, a place of salah, a place where you hold the prayer in there. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitate and made easy for us to make uh, broadcasting uh, like this, where you can see what's happening in the masjid, you can follow um, the uh, khatiras like that, and, and salat al jumuah or the khutbat al jumuah I mean, and uh, amongst other things. Again, I remind everybody here, the masjid really needs your support especially since our doors are closed right now and you are the main support. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one taking care of his house, but one of the very good deeds that you can do right now is to donate to the masjid, is to support the house of Allah because not only businesses, all organizations, I think the entire economy is suffering right now. Masjid is no exception because that is needed to keep going. So support us inshallah. So, Salah is the Mi'raj of, was given as a gift for the Prophet Sallallahu at this journey of Mi'raj meeting with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and Ascension. And it's offered for all believers at all times to be able to connect with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He also Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given other things at this journey other than Salah. He was given the three things. One is Salah. Two, Khawateen Surat Al-Baqarah, the ending, the last couple of ayat from Surat Al-Baqarah or few ayat from Surah Al-Baqarah, very important. He was giving that as a treasure directly from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala at this night. He was also given something very important and something very special, which is Maghfiratu uh, Al-Muqhimat. What is Al-Muqhimat? The sins that usually necessitate the sinner to go to the fire of hell. These are the major sins. Major sins for Ummah Muhammad وسلم, are being forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need a special tawbah for them though. And again, they are not directly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive everything directly. 
but they might uh, uh, cause some sentence in the fire of hell for a little bit, but the guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that even major sins of his ummah, if they die, man mata la yushriku billahi shay'an, those who die while having no shirk, no association with Allah in his status being the God, nothing. If they die with Allah purely uh, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with no shirk, then even major sins can be forgiven as I mentioned in the authentic ahadith. Uh, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also when he was taken to the Rihlatul Isra' wal Mi'raj for that journey he saw many other things. Many other, uh, he saw people uh, in Jannah, uh, be, people being um, honored by Allah like he smelled this uh, beautiful fragrance of Mashid ibn Fir'aun uh, and we talked about this yesterday. He also saw some of the punishment uh, or the punishment of some people, some sinners um, who do things like he saw those who commit backbiting and talk about others. He saw them with literally nails of copper, metal nails, and they are scratching themselves. And every time their skin comes back again, they scratch themselves. Um, this is how he saw them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We really need to, not only virus is destructive, not only wars are destructive, but we have some destructive um, characteristics, talking ill about one another. It destroys the emotions of someone else. It, it, it destroys the day of someone else. Subhanallah, something like bullying, something like backbiting, something like disrespecting each other. We are so sensitive and vulnerable that a word can hurt or can kill. A word can literally put a direction for the future of somebody. If it's a good word, a word of encouragement, a, word, a good word that you say to somebody can save their life can give them light, can give them hope, and vice versa. A bad word, al-kalim al-fasida. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also in Rihat al-Isra' wal miraj he saw, he saw literally a bull is coming out of a very small niche, very small hole, and then when he comes out, huge bull. He tries to come in again, but it's never possible. And he asked Jibreel, what is this? He said, this is the bad word. The bad word, once it comes out of your mouth, it can cause destructive things. And you can, there's no way you can take it back. There's no way you can take it back. So the Prophet ﷺ has taken all the way to Allah to see the kingdom and meet with Allah to give him salah and also show him that there are very, could be very uh, bad consequences, destructive consequences for what people say. He said in the hadith ﷺ, as he was giving the advice to Mu'ad, to take care of your tongue, control this, and he literally hold his tongue. He said, Ya Rasulullah, wa inna lamu akhaduna bima naqool, O Messenger of Allah, we're going to be held accountable for what we say. Qala thakilatka ummuka, ya Mu'ad, may your mother lose you. It's, it's a word of like, watch what you're saying. You really mean what you're saying? Yes, indeed. Wahal yakubbu al-nasa fi al-nari ala wujuhim illa hasaidu al-sinatim. What do you think? is the cause of people being dragged in their faces in the fire of hell the most, more than anything else, other than the consequences of their tongues. So it is a lesson for us to learn how to control ourselves, our tongues, not to talk ill about any, about each other because we don't want this for, from others. We don't want it to happen to um, us either, so we should not do it to others. Um, uh, he saw the punishment of the those who consume usury or involved in, in riba. He saw the punishment of those who commit zina. He saw the punishment of so many people and you can refer to many of these in the books uh, talking about the Isra wal Mi'raj uh, or in the books of the Hadith. Many of that or a lot of that is mentioned um, out there. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Now, the, the time that we live in is the time that we really need to reconnect with our sources. The main and the most important is this, the Quran, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reconnect with it. We are in a, in a in crossroads right now, as I talked a couple of days ago. I think it's, it's not only us as individuals, I think it's the entire 
uh, international system is probably is reforming right now. I think Allah Alam, everything that's coming in the next few months, the, the whole world is going to be changed after this uh, test or after this uh, experience that we all are going through right now. I'm sure that there's going to be huge differences. We are no exception. Let's change. Let's take that as a time to reflect, time to think, time to learn, time to change because it's needed. The whole world now we realize, we all realize how vulnerable, weak we are, how helpless we are, that we are in need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we are, we can be just locked down in no time like that. So let's take nothing for granted, reflect, and also it is the time to practice tawakkul ala Allah, putting trust in Allah, practice hope that this is gonna change, this is temporary, there is going to be an end for that, and look forward insha'Allah. Ramadan is coming very soon. Uh, insha'Allah, I hope and I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow us to pray in the masjid together after all of that is over. It's all make dua to Allah, but we keep our hope in Allah no matter what. If we pray Ramadan here, if we not, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take that right away, it can happen overnight. Allah can change anything. Or if it takes some time, we keep our faith and our hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as one of the essential parts of our Iman and our faith. Our faith in Allah should not be conditional. It's conditional. We worship only when it's good. We give only when we have or when we, uh, you know, at certain conditions, when we have certain threshold. We do good things at, no. We, we read that in many ayat in the hadith, in, the, in many ayat in the Quran, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praying those who are consistent, whether at thick or thin, at good times or not as good times, at times of um, prosperity or at times of suffering. So as believers, we should be always consistent and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and recheck and double check because we are not going to, uh, if you expected just uh, the, the prosperity to go forever, that is not how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made life or dunya. If you even expect this condition right now to continue forever, no, that's not the rule. It was never the same for any nation or for any individual. Everything changes and that's what gives us hope, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, we are at the bottom right now, but the curve is going to go up again um, as far as coming back to our normal lives and coming back to better, inshallah, and stronger to our normal life and to our uh, businesses and to our life, inshallah, and also better in our Iman and faith, learning a lot of lessons and th that will help us for the future, inshallah. Uh, I would like to uh, make a quick dua, inshallah. If you wanna, if you wanna make uh, uh, this all, make this dua together, inshallah, before we conclude, inshallah. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salat wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allahumma arhamna fa inna kabina rahim wa la tuadzibna fa anta alayna qadir wa altuf bina ya maulana fi ma jarat bihi al maqadir. اللهم يا ذا العزة والجبروت والمجد لك الأسماء الحسنى والصفات العلى تبارك اسمك وتقدست أسماءك وتعالى جدك ولا إله غيرك ارحمنا والطف بنا يا رحمن يا لطيف يا خبير اللهم ربنا اشرح صدورنا ويسر أمورنا اللهم اكشف همومنا وغمومنا وكروبنا يا رب العالمين والله lift the suffering والله free us from what we are going through يا رب العالمين O oh Allah, give those who are suffering shifa, Ya Rabbil Alameen. O oh Allah, give us a way out of that bi rahmatika, Ya Arhamar Rahmeen. Make us always hopeful in your rahmah, in your mercy, in your fadl, in your grace, Ya Rabbil Alameen. O oh Allah, we admit our weakness, we admit our vulnerability to you, and we admit and we announce that you are the greatest, the one of all powers, the one capable of doing everything. O oh Allah, with your power, change this condition to the best, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma ameen, ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Jazakumullahu khairan. Inshallah, join us for the next broadcast, live broadcast at 6 p.m. tonight, inshallah, uh, Pacific time. In the meantime, feel free to give us your feedback. 
your input, suggestions, questions uh, in the comments, inshallah, whether it's about the timing or about topics or about anything that you want to uh, give us feedback about. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair. Wa iyaakum.